What's up guys, welcome back to the YouTube channel. Do you know how much fuel it takes to make 2,800 horsepower to the tire? Let me show you. These are the two pulls we done with Randy's car on TKM Dyno last week. I wanted to show these data logs to you guys and show you exactly what was happening, what we were doing timing and fueling wise. A lot of people don't know what it takes. We're still learning, we're still pecking at it, we're still picking up power. But I just wanted to share the information with you guys. Check it out. If y'all want to support the channel, go to turbojohnracing.com. Grab yourself some hats and t-shirts. If y'all want to join in on our weekly live chats, we do every Wednesday night. Hit that join. Our channel is like $5 a month. We do a bench racing session where we talk about your car, our cars, and everything in detail for usually about an hour, hour and a half every Wednesday night. Appreciate it, guys. All right, guys. Well, here is the first data log here. Uh, now, something that I had forgot to mention, this was not exactly like our last pass when we were at Piedmont, when we were burning all the caddy off. I had already turned up a little bit of fuel, and we had already took some timing out of it. And I also increased the boost pressure because we were going to make another pass and try to go faster. Uh, so it was a little bit different. So the times and ETs and my power and stuff we ran the last time, which I couldn't share exactly with y'all, but it was nowhere near personal best, but we did make some modifications. So um, looking at this thing, so the red line here, this red line is your RPM, and then the, the green line up here is TPS. So Kevin unhooked the actual trans brake, the trans brake, the line, the, the wire, the physical wire that goes down to the transmission, it was disconnected. That's why when you see on the rollers, he goes up on the trans brake, but it, the car goes ahead and separates in the back, and the wheels are rolling. And when he when he gets launch boost, then he you know lets go of the button, and it's just like a pass. Now this was a short little pass, so we're going to show you everything. This is all in our screen over here. I'm gonna just scroll through. Uh, comes up. This thing spools up really fast. We've got it working pretty good. Uh, we were trying to leave with a little bit more boost, uh, and this piece right here. I call it a little hucklebuck, but uh, you can see what happens is I've got two offsets, two timing offsets, uh, one for RPM and one for timing. And basically we get a little bit more RPM while we're trying to spool it. Once it hits a certain boost, it drops down and then you, st you have to play with those. And you see the RPM, it was up there at 4,800. It makes 10.5 easily. I think I was targeting 11, 11 and a half. And so it comes down. And then once it drops here, so that's where I wanted right there, 11 at 4,200 or so. And, but then it lost this boost and so it brings the RPM back up and the boost comes back up, overshoots, comes back down. And that's what that is. So when he lets go to the trans brake here, you can see a couple things that happen um, when, when we go. Like I said, this is just like a pass we normally make. It leaves on, uh, what was that? 11.1 uh, pounds of boost. And it comes up and it loads it. Now, we had warmed the motor up real good, warmed the transmission stuff up real good. Uh, and it comes up here and shifts, uh, makes boost, makes a lot of boost. This is GTR, this is Jose's Turbo, the 122. This thing is pretty, pretty gangster. So it comes up, uh, shifts at 85, 8600. I think I had it set, set, set to shift at 84, 85. And then we get some RPM drop. But look at the boost up here. Uh, since I had added a little bit of dome pressure, I added five pounds, and it was it made more boost. We at the last pass we had 45 pounds of dome pressure, but this time we only had 50. But it made 44 pounds of boost. And looking at the fuel, and it's unbelievable when you look at that fuel flow. Look at this fuel flow here: 5,300 pounds of fuel. We had 16 and a half degrees of timing. 
and then he lets off. And so when he let off, of course, it was a little short pull. So we had uh, air fuel ratio target was 2.6, and actual air fuel ratio was 2.57 here. And you see the way this is it was adding a little bit of fuel um, throughout. And we come to the conclusion we don't think that this air fuel ratio number is right based on what the plug is showing us uh, and what everything is looking. He runs an NGK 11 plug, but that amount of fuel. Uh, 5,300 pounds of fuel, 2,600 horsepower. Generally, methanol breaks specific fuel consumption. I think most people agree it's like 1.8. Some people say 2.0. Basically, uh, that would be about, if it was 2.0 break, so it would take 2 pounds per horsepower. So you'd take 5,300 and divide it by 2, and that would give you, um, if it was 2.0 break specific fuel consumption. So we're, we're pretty close on what our numbers are supposed to be here. So this is our EGTs. And Kevin fixed this for his 400 to 15. And like he was saying, you'd have these that stick out a little bit. And see, we've got uh, one, this EGT number two here is way lower than the other ones. So the rest of them are pretty consistently close. Uh, not too far off, these two right here, and these two right here. So EGTs weren't terrible. Let's compare to the full pool. Let's go ahead and do that real fast. So this is the the full pool pool. This is the the one that we made. That's a little bit longer. It made 2,800 horsepower. We did a little bit of individual cylinder, but you can see uh, it took a little bit longer to get there uh, as well. But when it comes up, we basically didn't change anything. We did add dome pressure as well. But when you look at the EGTs out here, uh, let's look right here at the same spot right before we lifted. See, all the EGTs are, are similar. We did do a little bit of individual, but it was just just minor. I don't remember which ones. We, we added a little bit of fuel to a couple holes. But then if you go out here and you take a look way out here, you can see the EGTs on this one there again at the end. Uh, we got that cylinder number two, which is the coldest, 981, 1234, 1217, 1254, 1238. 1054, 1066, and then 1243. Now the plugs on these look pretty good. Uh, we would like these to to get a little a little hotter. It would be perfect. Uh, our goal is to get them so they're all pretty close. It could be a depth uh, of the probe into the cylinder. There could be a few things that is making this uh, a little bit different. So we're going to work on those cylinders. And what we'll do is we'll try to add a little bit of timing, uh, maybe take a little bit of timing out and see uh, you know, th what those holes do. Sometimes if you pull way too much timing out of a hole, then it'll elevate the EGTs real high because it'll be burning in the header. So, uh, But also the opposite, if you add timing, then it's gonna get a better burn and it should combust most of the fuel and it should raise the EGTs too. So EGTs are just a number though. So um, we've gotta understand that we might not be able to get that to where it reads exactly the same at all times. So let's go take a look back at this one. And so looking back at this, so this is the uh, where it t takes off again. I got to do a little bit of work again on the the little uh, hucklebuck stuff. But let's look at this one and see what the max fueling is at the, the peak. I think the peak horsepower on the second pool was right about in here. And we had 5,300 pounds of fuel there. Uh, still saying 45, look at that boost, 46, 47, almost 46 pounds of boost. So we, we added five pounds of dome pressure. And you see we actually added it down here. So you look at commanded versus not. And then you can see what it did. Now up here in the run, it was essentially the same. Uh, right here, we did have a little bit more on it. Boost was, we added five pounds of dome pressure. And we got one pound of boost, so that's not much. Uh, we're not monitoring back pressure on this thing, so we're probably going to need to start monitoring back pressure. Because generally, if you add five pounds of dome pressure and you only pick up one pound of boost, uh, you know that could be a sign that we're getting close to uh, where this turbine wheel is going to be happy. Um, now, at the very, very peak, uh, it kind of lays over a little bit, so we might still be fine. So 45, 46 pounds of boost is what we maxed out out there. Fuel flow up here at the top, 5,500 at 8,600 RPM. So we, I mean, that's a lot. I mean, that's that's a lot of boost. That's a lot of fuel. Uh, when you look at the uh, injection, the duty cycle stuff, they're getting 16 and a half degrees of timing. Now there is some some merit too. I've never really played with it, but on the dyno. 
you know, it's one of those things we probably could play with it more or we'll try to track it at some point once we get the tune better. But once we get past peak torque, a lot of people will do is they will go in here and say, I've got this very basic timing graph, right? So it's 38 and then a little bit extra to help it spool up. And then I just square it out. Now, a lot of people that make this look a lot nicer. and But the reality is, is we're never going to be at 40 pounds of boost at 2,900 RPM. So to me, these whole numbers up here in this corner back here don't really make any difference. But what some people will do is uh, based on RPM over here. So like say uh, we're up here at say above 35 pounds of boost. And once we get past peak torque, say 7,700 RPM, they'll add a half a degree of timing or a degree of timing over here. Uh, to, to make up because as everything speeds up, the, the piston is going up and down faster. The fuel does not burn as efficient with the, the same timing lead. So you have to advance it a little bit. Uh, we haven't really played with that a lot though. So I mean, we might, that, that's definitely more advanced tuning. Um, so maybe we'll get there at some point. But overall, guys, I just want to share with y'all how much fuel this thing is using, what kind of timing we got. This is uh, 427. Uh, timing uh, is, you know, at that boost level, 16.5. The plugs look pretty good. Uh, all the cadmium was still on it. Last pass we were out there, we had about 20 and a half degrees of timing, and it was burning all the cadmium off, and it was also a little bit leaner. And when I say a little bit leaner, uh, we were not at 45 pounds of boost. We were about 40, 41 pounds of boost. And uh, it was burning, I think it was like 4,600 pounds of fuel per hour. So it's a big difference. It's a lot of, a lot of fuel difference. Uh, and, you know, these air fuel ratio numbers, we're pretty confident that 2.36 is not accurate. We know those NTK sensors, sometimes they're accurate, sometimes they're not accurate. But this right here is a, a way that, you know, you can get bit in the butt by looking at only the air fuel numbers. And I was, I was targeting like 2.9. I was targeting 2.930 but the plug kept showing hot. So you look at the plug, you look at the, the data and you go, man, this just doesn't look right. And so which one do you believe? You believe the plug, the plug is in the cylinder, the plug is in the chamber, the plug is the witness to actually what's going on. These uh, O2 sensor out here is, I mean, you would hope it would read correct, but this one is just reading, reading rich. And Randy's gonna grab another sensor at some point, we're gonna toss in it and see if that's the case. Uh, we may end up, at some point, just not letting, which I've already got the closed loop locked down pretty good. You can see I've only letting it pull out 3% is the max it can pull. And right there, our target was 2.62 uh, and it was 2.4, 2.45, 2.39. So now I've actually got my target actually just a tad richer than that too. I went ahead and fattened that bad boy up to my target where, and these numbers are insane at 45 pounds of boost. It's 2.4 air fuel ratio. And when you look at your um, base fuel, the pounds per hour, this is my chart. That one looks a little more professional. Uh, still not the best, of course. But uh, I always look at it at pounds per hour. But I mean, a lot of people just look at it in uh, volumetric efficiency. Uh, as you get closer to that peak torque, that's where these numbers are higher. And the volumetric efficiency actually goes down as you go past peak torque. Uh, the way i understand it uh but i like pounds per hour just because the numbers are just the numbers and they just they look better to me uh <laughs> the way that is so we're probably going to clean this up a little bit make this um down through here just a little bit better but i think we're good to go all right guys well i just want to share the numbers that's how much fuel it takes on randy's car actual pounds per hour to make 2800 horsepower at hub appreciate it guys comment like and subscribe we're going to darlington this weekend we'll see y'all there see you